Wow. Pamalu for me means to be like to be in protection of. I'm not a fluent Hawaiian speaker, but the image I always see is uh, of like a mom cradling her baby, and then that protection that baby's in that comfort. That's how I feel. I mean, took us about a year to build. We did it by hand. Uh, aside from chainsaws to cut the trees down, everything was hand carved. Uh, everything was hand lashed. There's no nails or staples or anything. The walls have no cement. It's all done traditional. So the knowledge is hundreds if not thousands of years old. Uh, the lashings used were va'a lashings or canoe lashings. And uh, we did it that way because the the kumus that taught our leader Casey who led us on this uh, Hale building journey were uh, navigators and they've passed uh, Uncle uh, Clay Bertelman and Uncle Eddie Ka'ana'a and so if you're a canoe person everything you tie you practice your canoe lashes because uh, the most important part of the canoe is the lashings yeah uh, if you think about the old days when they never have coast guards and stuff and you went in the canoe to go fishing it's a good chance you're not gonna come back yeah and so they rather the lash be tighter uh, the lash last longer than the wood so the reasons for all these crosses and everything that you see on these lashes is because if I was to cut this rope right here the lash would still hold and so that was a uh, Another journey we got to partake in was learning about canoes and stuff like that. But this holly is all made out of uh, mangrove. So we went to the fish ponds. Mangrove, I don't know if you guys know about mangrove, but mangrove uh, collects silt in the fish ponds and the silt, uh, the silt kills the lean with the, the seaweed, which then affects the, the native fish growing. So by Taking out the mangrove, we actually help the fish pond to breathe better. And then we bring them here and we repurpose, yeah. Make something beautiful. Do you guys have any questions? I've never seen mangrove get that big. Yeah. <laughs> Not here, at least. You know, uh, the, uh, these are from uh, Waikolo Loko Ia in uh, Kaneohe. Hmm. It's uh, Uncle Fred. He's about 87. He spent his life, uh, aside from being a principal, from working on that fish pond, and his dad was the caretaker of that fish pond too. So we went out and helped him. Yeah, this is mangrove, and then the the thatching is peely. Is it grown here? Do you guys grow uh, it here yet, or yeah, this uh, not on our property. We've tried, but we have we we have to plan it better. The volunteers that come, they keep. Pulling it out. out. <laughs> <laughs> so we we never made a a true concerned effort where we planted a whole field. Okay. Just and let let it be off bound. So. So where is this one from then? This is from Manoa. Majority is from Manoa, and uh, the thing about Pili is you can get three good harvests out of it a year because it's just grass, yeah. But uh, we'll harvest it maybe in. So this bottom row, this first row, we harvested in June. And so it's it's about this big. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second row we harvest we went back and harvested in June, in August. Oh and wow. that's like two feet bigger. And then as we get to October it got smaller again. So yes. we learned a lot about Peely. We <laughs> we thought that they all grow this big. Mm -hmm. And so we spaced everything accordingly and then we found out that we had to wait for the right month for it to get that big again and so <laughs> this journey took us a year to build but uh that's on wednesdays and sometimes some saturdays and then that was mostly with volunteers from the whole community mm -hmm. teaching people how to lash teaching people about peely there's so much to learn yeah peely you guys know what peely means relationship yeah uh peely like nice relationships relationship. yeah Pili is close, like close, like 
Like, we're not peely yet. But <laughs> now we're peely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and so, working with peely, the seeds will get stuck on you. And you wash your clothes maybe three, four loads, you know. And then you'll put it on a couple months later and you still have a peely seed somewhere poking you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny we learned so much from peely but anyway the peely seed looks like an eyelash and it'll roll on the ground until it finds moisture and it'll actually dig itself in and you can see it and so we were working with peely and peely seeds are all over us and then as you start to sweat and get hotter they start to oh. burrow in and they keep poking you and so we <laughs> we're like oh wow so we actually it was fun. We learned a lot. <laughs> Everything we did in here, we learned a lot. And it's just knowledge that uh, we're not used to, to learning, yeah? We built it out of Pili because uh, Kalihi was famous for Pili houses. So, since I know you said that you used uh, canoe lashings, yeah. is there another lashing that you just, you didn't have someone to be able to teach you? And oh, um, just yeah. Like there is, uh, I call them land lashings, but I belong to a halal where we go and build halis all over. And there, it's still secure. Uh, it's just, the thing with canoe lashes is when the va is in the ocean, it needs to hold tight and, and flex and sway. And so the land lash uh, is just as effective. It maybe doesn't look as pretty or as intricate oh. but uh they they do have land lashes and i i know majority of them so each of this lash can be done a different way without all the crossings and stuff so do they tend not to last as long then uh no it lasts it lasts long this is just because that's what canoe people do they they keep practicing their lash and so the uncles taught taught casey then casey taught us and we in honoring them we I do just it was just fun because we perfected all the last yeah yeah we have fish tails we have whips we have blue lashes we have rolling hitches we have diamond lashes we have elios we have all kinds and you feel free to uh to touch walk around and touch and feel it this is a healing holly and the way we figured to get it to hold that that purpose was to just have as much people come with good intentions and with Aloha and just rub it, chill it, happy talks. <laughs> yeah. And then, okay, so I noticed, sorry, I, you guys can ask questions too, but I just, I noticed you have traditional. Oh, um, at our Hale Blessing, we had people come from all over. And so this is from the Hokulea. Oh. Okay. And then uh, this is uh, somebody had made that sent it and brought it over for us and i i'm not sure where that originally came from but it is it might be a good chances from micronesia because at the time we were uh we had you know mao pialug mm -hmm. papa mao we had his son up here uh placito and he carved a couple canoes for us actually he carved he carved two canoes on a property but he gave one to kupu so kupu has a canoe Oh. And so uh, later on, we can go walk around. We have we have uh, two canoes on the property that one we carved out of Albizia and one Placito carved out of Albizia. So even though it's a soft wood, it still works well for a canoe? Yeah, it actually works really good for a canoe. I, we could pile in four or five guys big like me and it's still ride high. It actually tips over easy because it's so buoyant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. <laughs> Which is, uh, they just had the buffalo. Keolana. Keolana. Yeah. And then so we had, uh, they had let us bring our canoe. And so we were able to surf on the big waves with, us, with our canoe. And it lasted. So we are happy. <laughs> <laughs> the men from the mountain would go ride the ocean. It was funny. <laughs> so what other things, I mean, do you guys, um, besides, so you do take care of the land, you built this house, you guys... Do you te did they did you teach the canoe building or you yeah. just came up and did it? Uh no, we uh it's funny, like everything we do 
we just kind of try and just do them and we do a little research and we we put the prayers out and then people just show up people just show up so we had a tree that wanted to be a canoe and it was laying on the ground for <laughs> about two two and a half three years wow and we had a tahitian guy come and says yes i'm going to make a canoe and then we had uh hawaiians come and say yes i'm going to make a canoe we had tokilawans come yes i'm going to make a canoe and then <laughs> finally placito came and said yeah hey, i'm making a canoe and he just started <laughs> <making it. laughs> so we have all kinds of stories that uh happen on this land that uh, i don't know I've, I've been here almost five years i volunteered for two years before then i've seen a lot of interesting things that have changed my my outlook on on the world yeah uh over here we we talk to the rocks we ask the rocks if they want to move we ask the trees what they want to be and then we we don't just go willy-nilly chopping things down because then that creates an imbalance yeah so we just try to do things in the most pono way we can which is uh a whole new concept for me so even with the invasive species you guys asked before yeah so um as we go walking around and we go up to the top you see more evidence but uh like these as you came up those tall straight trees that lined the driveway mm. those are coca those are invasive also but uh they've been telling us they want to be a big holly so Oh. So we're gonna. You have to wait till they grow bigger. No, they're actually big enough. We're gonna make a thirty by sixty foot holly over there, where the tents are. Yeah. Wow. And so those trees are about sixty, seventy feet tall. So, <laughs> chance of <huh>? Yeah. <laughs> so we here. Uh, this is uh, an and place. It's not an ore place, it's an ant place. And it's, uh, there's enough room for do everything, for try different ways. Like, everything grown in a garden, nothing here is owned by anybody. And, and it's owned by everybody. So whatever is grown in a garden, we give away free. Uh, we teach people how to grow organically every Thursday. Every Wednesday we have community groups that come up and we, uh, we work the land, but nothing is nobody's and then that's a new concept so one time we were planting uh tapioca and we had uh you know this this lady from here was saying no you have to cross it cross the two sticks and this other lady was saying no we lay it down and this other lady we go straight up you know and then they're like instead of grumbling we'll just make three areas and just <laughs> <laughs> you make yours cross you make yours lay down and then we go look and see what happens yeah, yeah. they all grew the same you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometimes uh, in the beginning we would have people that say that's not how you grow bananas you know but then how do you grow bananas just put them in the ground and it does all the growing by itself <laughs> so it's just uh changing people's attitudes when they come up here that yeah, we don't really own nothing. And yeah, we, we own everything. So if you're growing that eggplant and you've been watching that eggplant and you come the next day and it's gone, you kind of get mad. <laughs> <laughs> Majority of our food goes to the community and to the elders down the road anyway. Okay. We take them to the uh, the elderly at KPT. We take them to the elderly at Ulek. Uh, so everything we do here is, uh, you know, to have a village mentality is everybody talks about having a village yeah but that village mentality is is actually hard for people to understand yeah it's like um like oh scotty he ate all the poi that's why no more poi that's not the important part yeah the important thing is no more poi so we got to go make some more because mm. you're supposed to eat the poi mm. you're not supposed to not eat them and let them rot away right you're right. supposed to eat them and you're supposed to make sure it's full and so just that's all new new mentality for me growing up how i grew up yeah that it's pretty pretty nice anyway you guys have any questions we teach 
I teach people how to uh, make the rock wall. Try stack rock walls. I've learned from. So as we go, as we go more, you can see. But uh, this this whole land was uh, it was a nursery before, yeah, and then that nursery strip mined the soil and sold the soil. And so when you uh, strip mining is just clearing the layers of soil out. And so basically they took away all the good soil and they left what was left, which uh, also helped the invasives grow better because the natives couldn't handle it. Yeah. And so this place became, uh, well, as we have about 90% invasives on this place. And anyway, uh, when the nursery was done, there's a realtor that wanted to build a gated community up here. And so the pig hunters of Kali actually travel this valley back and forth and they knew of all the ancient sites. And so the pig hunters were fighting to stop the development for about, I think it was 13 years or so. And then Kokua Kali Valley jumped on the bandwagon and on the side of the pig hunt, the pig farmers or the pig hunters. And so we, were, we released the land for 20 years and the first things we saw was all the the ancient walls that are a couple hundred years old that have been destroyed by the forest and so we started to rebuild and you know we had to learn how to rebuild so we had to we put the prayers out and these men that repair the hay owls came out of the bushes and they were like oh we can teach you and so we started we started working uh with small ahus and then slowly started building rock walls so this rock wall has no cement inside. <coughs> Zero. I mean, it's it's pretty solid. Yeah. But yet it can be taken apart and restacked. And uh, there's there's formulas and that'll make ensure it does that. Yeah. And so you have a. The Hawaiian way is is that you use gravity as much as you can. You have a slight lean. This side, you, you really can't tell, but if you go on the outside, you'll see the lean more pronounced. And that lean is just to ensure that when everything falls and settles, it settles inward. Yeah? And so this hale, the structure of this hale, so we, we got all kinds of stuff up here. But if you look at the, if you look at the back of these uh, poles or posts, there's an ule sticking out. Yeah? Oh, yeah. And the ule sticks out like this. It's connected to this post. And then on the oas coming down from the rafters, you have a kohe that captures it. And so, the way this was built was when the earth moves, it just settles. It, it cannot, because of the holo ilios, it cannot, it cannot slide sideways. It just settles. So, they even have old documentation that, uh, Hollies never never blew down. They lost thatchings and stuff. But uh, the main set of the frames always stood still. So do you guys make like the top part first and then you reinforce it? You start from it? the bottom. Start from the bottom? So you guys are a little bit late, but for that whole year, we had a... Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. Well, let me... You can stand up if you need us to. You just can stand up. I want to. Uh, I'll let you guys look at the top. Can you guys see the top? Sorry, I feel like once I take this down, it's going to stick down. Yeah. Can you see the top? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, we had that same structure. the top pieces of the oas cross and then we have this one uh, wood on the bottom and one wood on the top and so as it crosses like this we have these two up here that binds it 
and so it can't flex either way. Mm. And then with this, so this whole design is so that it settles. And you guys can, you guys can push at the thatching and whatever. You guys can feel free to explore. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. That's <laughs> not what I expected. Yeah. And so this is a. Uh, wow. It was built really well, oh, and wow. we took a year and we 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 didn't we treated it like a pregnancy <laughs> that you don't want to you don't want the baby to come before it's time. <laughs> yeah, and so we just let this holly be. And there's there's all kinds of like there's hidden lashes too. Like if you can reach right behind here. Oh, wow. Um, right, right back here. Right here. Oh, Feel that? Oh, yeah. How solid is that? Is That's it solid. everywhere, or just on that corner just one? Just on the corners. So whatever, whenever we need to bind two woods together. We put this lash in, it's called an Elio lash. Interesting. Do like you ever have to like reinforce the lash? Or is it supposed to be like... Uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, if, if the lash goes, then we can... Every The way this was built, everything can be taken out and put back. How long was this after? Uh, July was our oh. blessing. Wow. So just yeah. recently. So anyway, back to the, you see that inside roof structure? Yes. Mm -hmm. The first thing you build when you build a hale is once you set your posts in the ground, is you build that same triangle structure. And then that's what you'll climb on. So how, what did they use as the foundation for the posts? Like is it, I mean, did you use cement underneath or you just dug no. it deep enough and then put it in? It's about little over four feet down right we round the bottom of the poles and then we got a nice size rounded rock that we place at the bottom of the hole so the pole sits on the rock mm -hmm. so that if it fills up with rain water or whatever the the wood stays off the ground what's the purpose of the rounding of the bottom so it sits oh okay <laughs> so instead of sitting like this okay. so the thing will okay because that that'll you know, you got this and something can move or shift, but if you get this, then you cannot really. And so for that forming, you guys did that all naturally? Like... Oh, you did, okay. Coes, ads, all of these, if you look, they look like they're straight across, but they're not really. Do you guys sketch before you build? Like, no. make a specific no. plan? In your head? <laughs> there uh, you go. There's formulas. Oh. Uh, I know the formulas because I belong to a halal, but the height of your the height of your poles plus half the width determines the pitch on the top of your roof. If you want to get technical, height of your poles plus half the width. Yeah, that's the math there. <laughs> yeah, and so it's a uh, oh, tons of math in here. We yeah. yeah. So this is not. This is not hollow, this is solid. This is mangrove, solid mangrove. So this was married to this. Yeah, so we put the we put that corner post first. And then we mm -hmm. then we carve the lohelau to sit on the post and we carve the post so it'll accept the lohelau. And then we carve this oa to fit this lohelau to fit this post to capture this ule. Wow. And so each one was individually handmade to marry each other and you know this is uh i don't know maybe this would be a uh, an ali'i's hale or something but as far as hale's go this is a pretty big hale oh. do you know how long it usually lasts um kind of... as far as the thatching this is my first hale pili but i do know that kanewai is made out of Pili at uh, UH. Yeah, the, we were just there Thursday. And then that's about 14 years old, right? Oh, oh wow. And so that... that Without having been rethatched re yeah, as far as you know. In fact, we went back over there and we had to change... We've been... We're working on changing the wood. So we replaced some of the wood. Well, the wood is needing to be replaced before the Pili. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you think about it, and it's, it's, it's weird. 
Yeah, it's very unexpected that the wood would well, you see, need like, replacing before the thie peely. When this are the way this is tied, like you can't really lose anything. Oh. Except maybe on the outside, yeah? Well, but I'm just thinking like deterioration. Oh, yeah, deterior I would think that that deteriorates quicker than wood. Yeah, and so the, the, about, the amount of bundle you put as each one layers off, you still have that. It's weird. It's weird. Uh, it also has to do with with the out out environment, yeah, the outer environment. But at Kaala Farms, they built theirs in the seventies uh, in Waianae, and theirs was peely, but it just got burnt a couple years ago oh. from a fire in Wahiwa. Oh, the, the embers I... flew right right over the mountain, right? Just, in, and, that catches fast, yeah. Yeah, it's just dry grass, and so technically. You need permits. You need if it's too close to a house, then you need you need fire sprinklers and stuff like that. Technically, but uh, when they lease us this land, we we got it in the in the lease that we can practice Hawaiian culture. So. Right, that's all you need. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta say the magic two words: <laughs> Hawaiian culture. <laughs> but is uh, so each of these purlins, yeah. We built the same triangle shape on the ground and it went up about two feet from that top. And so each of these is spaced your knee to your foot oh. of the smallest person so that you, so we're sitting, so you end up sitting on it like you're on a couch. And so this, this scaffolding system is the exact shape of this roof. So imagine taking this roof and putting it on the ground. And on all of these being spaced so far apart that you actually sit on your butt and you pull yourself up and you work this way. So all our lashes is like this. So we can have 20 people in a circle sitting, just lashing. Wow. And we can all go up at the same time. We can all. Wow. So actually, the kids loved it. It was their jungle gym. While you're working, the kids will be jumping all over and play. Oh, yeah. They cried when we took down the... <laughs> they, they literally, they cried. Which is funny. We were crying because we're done. Like, yeah. They're crying because we took away the jungle gym. So when you get higher up and there's like more of that reinforcement, that's just for like wind and stuff? Because... Uh... Are you talking about the cross pieces? The, yeah. The, these are purlins, yeah? Uh -huh. These are the rafters. So this is the Aho Puel. The bigger one is the Aho Puel. And the small one is the Aho Pio. So I'm thinking this is where the owl would sit, maybe. Uh. So they called it after the owl, the Aho Puel. And so oh. like that top one, uh, Kua Iole, which is like the back of the rat. So I'm thinking the rat runs on his bottom one and his back would scrape the top one. Huh? So it's just trying to figure out what what words they used and stuff. And this is the holo holo ilio, yeah, the the dog. And so it's actually on a bigger holly you would have two pieces and it would look resemble the dog's leg being bent. And so when the dog lays down on the ground, and so this is to actually help it stay on the ground. This stops it from shifting this way. These stop it from opening and closing. That top stops it from opening and closing. So when the earth moves, and it moves every day, it just sits tighter. It's mm. fantastic. Uh, we've had master builders come to our blessing and then they were, they were just, they were really pleased. At your blessings, do you do like a yeah, uh, do a whole whole bunch of chants, singing. The people from Hokulia came and they did a dance, and you know, we had the kids from Micronesia come, Pacific Voices. We had about a hundred kids come and just sing. And it's funny, we we deal with a lot of Micronesians in in Kali. Well, at Koko Kali Valley at our health clinic, we have twenty seven different interpreters. Just to handle the different ethnicities in Kali. And so, you know, I hear like people 
talk bad about Micronesians or whatever, but Papa Ma was a Micronesian that taught us how to navigate. Stuff like that, yeah. And so anyway, it's, up here is nice because this is like a Pu'uhonua or a safe place for everybody. Anybody can come and be safe. And so it's, we try to enforce it in a Pono way. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't matter what what you want to do or yeah yes we do sing and we chant and do hula and it's funny we had uh people some japanese people and they brought bamboo uh arrangement that they said was meant to bring good luck uh a lady from south america came with tequila and poured it on the corners because she said that's what they do in their town and Hawaiians came with Ava and did the same thing because they said that's what they're doing. So it's just <laughs> happy, happy, happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just like the old days, you know, like, I feel like you guys have been exploring. Do we have uh, old broken poi pounders? Yeah. Put back in the wall, yeah. And it's, it's, everything has a life, but like maybe. In the old days, that was your grandpa's boy pounder, and then it broke. So now he's guardian of the wall, huh? Now he's helping you protect your wall. That's cool. Yeah. I like this one. I would put this one here. Oh yeah. <laughs> was that the top of that one? Did no, there's two. Oh. Huh? I'm spider, spider over there, and I'm definitely afraid of spiders. Oh. So I'm wiggling this way. <laughs> I never saw that. Before. I don't know if it is in that. Oh. It almost looks like a flower, though. Where are you looking at? Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> it's gone already. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Actually, it's okay. <laughs> it's a spider casing. <laughs> Would you guys, uh. Oh, it's kind of cool now. You guys wanna. Do you guys have any more questions, or you wanna. Look, I can't do 